I've been very blessed in my life. And I've been blessed to receive a witness of the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ, the restoration of his gospel. And with that comes knowledge of him as the Savior and the work that he has done. And honestly, I feel I feel I have such a long way to go to truly comprehend the atonement and truly be able to have the gratitude that it deserves. It's something that I I desire and that I, I I seek to grow in every day. But I have enough to know that it's true. I have been given that much. And I I'm I'm so grateful for what Jesus did for me. And I'm grateful to have these glimpses and understandings of the eternal plan. To understand who and what I am. Understand that I have an eternal history building up to this moment. That's meaningful to me. Understanding who I am, where I am, why I'm here, how I got here. That's a very important context that empowers me and it motivates me. And it puts me in a mindset to really want to take advantage of this moment. And I get strength from that. So I'm grateful for the scriptures. I'm grateful for these doctrines that they're a little uh, little metaphysical at times, right? There, there's, a, there's a lot of context behind them. Um, they can be a little surreal, a little um, abstract at first. But the more that I've studied and, and dug into these concepts... I've found great meaning in them, and it has had an impact on on me and my ability to follow the Savior and try to apply his teachings in my life. And one of the great revelations I've received is truly about what it means uh, to have integrity. And we talked about the honor of God, the honor that Jesus Christ has. Why, 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 why does the universe obey him? Well, it's because he has integrity. He's true to his word. And, and that understanding of his character and who he is, that has been a very empowering concept to me in my life as well. Because what I get out of that is I do not know all things, but I can be true to my word. I can have integrity. And the gospel of Jesus Christ and the salvation that Jesus Christ offers us, right, the fact that we can receive a fullness if we attain to a portion of, it, of, of celestial glory, what that means to me, what I get out of that, is that I can make covenants, promises, And all that's required of me at that point is to be true to my word. Is that I have integrity, meaning I make a true, honest, good faith effort. I might have doubts. I might have things that don't make sense and I'm confused about. I might have trials. I might have things down the road. I might have things that shake my faith. There are all sorts of things that we see take people off the path and move them away from light, away from the Savior into darkness. And we lament over that and we we cry for those who, who wander from the gospel. But what understanding, understanding that true nature and the integrity of God and the integrity of Jesus Christ, what that empowers me with is that even if I have doubts or even if I have trials and I have moments of where, where my faith is shaken. What I have learned is that I can just place my integrity as my foundation. And that I have made covenants and I have made promises. And if I am true to my, if I am just true to my word, if I have integrity, the fullness of the blessings are available to me. And that concept and that that approach to living the gospel has been so powerful in my life and it has lifted me up 
and just understanding the character of God and the integrity of God, that has given me something that I can seek to emulate. And I have seen myself progress and grow in my capacity to live my covenants. And I have experienced a greater fullness of joy and of the Spirit, a greater presence of the Lord in my life, and a greater capacity to commune with Him. And that is my testimony, that the atonement is real, and it's something that we can take advantage of in our lives. And it's not just what He did, it's who He is, having done it. And it's His character, and it's that fullness of love, that fullness of integrity, that I that I adore, that I worship, and that I seek to emulate in my life. And I, I know that his character is true, and I find, I find personal power in that. And I share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I might just quickly just add and second that to, it is strange and humbling to think that this, this, this entity, this person that we have described in Christ and who he is and what he has done and how all things look to him for salvation, how yet he is capable of and willing to have that unique individual relationship with you so that he can transform you as an individual and turn you into a, a new creature, a better creature, and to prepare you to return and to be with him. And somehow he does that one by one. You know, it's it's not a, a mass salvation event, right? He does it individually, one at a time. And and both of us can, can testify of the love and the grace and the mercy that he provides. But for me individually, the unique experience I've had to to have to take advantage of his atonement in ways that um, required such complete humility and faith in him and trust in him, hoping that there would be something reciprocated and then ultimately receiving a culmination of that hope and that faith in, in the understanding and, and the knowing that what I have done and the things I have gone through that there is grace and that there is forgiveness and that there is a remission of those things and that Christ willingly takes those upon himself and that he did that for me. You know, he does that specifically for me as an individual and I know that the things I've done and the things I continue to do, he's personally taken upon himself. And and the fact that he's able to do that at such a unique, individual, personal level, it it changes who you are to realize an entity like that will do it for you and for all who who allow him to who who follow him and come after him and and seek to receive of that same grace and that same mercy and that's available to all within the sound of, of our voice and when you receive that grace and that mercy and and you start to apply the atonement into your life, you you literally can become a new person. And that's something I think both of us can testify of, is that, you know, people don't change. Well, Christ can change people. Like, you you do a little bit of your part. You, you give up your heart a little bit. And yeah, on your own, without anybody else, you wouldn't change. But with Christ, you could change. And he'll make you into a new creature. And I testify of him in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.